Is now the right time for you to invest, even though it's a bear market? Well, that depends. In this video, we're gonna discuss what a bear market is, what a bull market is, some interesting facts about previous bear markets, two main strategies that investors seem to use in a bear market, and then we'll discuss what I'm personally gonna be doing. And look, even though it is a bear market at the time of filming this, all this information should still be relevant and definitely useful and, and, and offer some value for you. Now, disclaimer time. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I don't know your situation. This is basically just me and what I'm gonna be doing. You can read a full disclaimer down in the little description. So with that being said, you can take this as entertainment, useful bits of information, whatever you want. Just not financial advice. Now, just for your information, I am Australian, so I'll be talking mostly about the Australian Stock Exchange or the ASX, uh, but I do still have a little bit of assets in the Wall Street market. So I'll mention, I'll actually mention both of them. I mean, America and Australia's markets are, are relatively intertwined anyway. Now, this one is a little on the lengthier side, but I did really just want to add some value. So with all of that being said, all that's out of the way, let's get into it. Is now a good time to invest even though it's a bear market. Firstly, what's a bear market? Simply put, a bear market is a prolonged period of a decline in the value of stocks, and specifically a 20% or more decline over consecutive periods. Now, the reverse of that is a bull market, which is basically a period of time where the stocks are rising. Bear equal down, bull equal up, is the simple way of putting it, really. Now, in a perfect world situation, you'd buy them while they're low in value, you'd sit on for a while, either live off of the dividends, would be your end term goal, or you'd sell them at a higher price for a profit. But no one, no matter how good they claim to be, can predict to the bottom. So it's not quite as simple as that. Having said that, here are some fun facts you might find interesting about a bear market. Now, I did nab these uh, little facts here from hartfordfunds.com. Uh, so this is specifically to Wall Street. However, like I said before, Wall Street and ASX, they obviously are different, um, but they're, they're very related and, and a lot of sort of intermingling happens there and what affects the American market affects the Australian market and, and vice versa, well, vice versa to an extent. So fun fact number one, stocks lose 36% on average in a bear market, but then in the following bull markets gain 100 and 14% in value. The average bear market length is 289 days and the average bull market length is 991 days. So remember bear is down, bull is up. So on average, the bull market is three times as long. And assuming you invest for the long term, we're talking 50 years, uh, you can expect roughly 14 bear markets during that period of time. And here's a direct quote from their site. Now I'm gonna read it off my phone because it'll make sure I get it you know, if I'm quoting, gotta make sure it's right. Bear markets can be painful, but overall markets are positive a majority of the time. Over the last 92 years of market history, bear markets have comprised of only 20.6 of those years. And put another way, stocks have been on the rise 78% of the time. So I don't know about you, I found that, I found that quite encouraging really. Stocks are on the rise 78% of the time. That is 10 out of 10. Before we get any further, just comment down below. Let me know what your investment plan is. Are you are you a bit of a long-term investor? Do you like to try your hand at day trading? What do you like to do? Personally, I'm a long-term investor, but we'll get to a bit more of that later. So those facts are all quite fun, but you bet you're asking yourself, okay, great. Now, how do we invest? Is that is now the best time to invest? Blah, blah, blah. So there are two main strategies that people seem to use. And I mean, look, there's lots of strategies, all right? And especially if you're a professional or full-time uh, investor, you're gonna have lots and lots of strategies. But these are the two main strategies that I've seen people uh, seem to be using, but also they're the two that, that I personally really like. These are all assuming you've set everything up. You've got your broker set up, you're basically just ready to buy stocks or you've already bought some. If you haven't done that, maybe let me know down below in the comments. Uh, I can always do a video on how to get it started for beginners, complete beginners, you know, like a complete walkthrough. I've been thinking of doing one of those anyway. But anyway, I'm gonna be assuming at this point that you have done that. If you haven't, comment down below, I'll get that, I'll get that out for you. And I mean, personally, I do like to use an app called Stake. That's S-T-A-K-E. They only have $3 brokerage. They have a clean user interface. You can access the Australian market as well as the Wall Street market. And I mean, personally, I'm just I'm just a big fan of it. And look, the, the cheap brokerage is definitely a big part of that. Oh, and also with troubleshooting, they got back to me really fast. So 10 points for that. But look, while we're here, if you do decide to sign up with them, uh, use the code on the screen now and you get $10. Go towards buying stock when you fund your ASX account or you get a free stock if you fund your Wall Street account. Anyway, I digress. Moving on, moving on. Digressing way too much. So the two main strategies that I liked are called playing dead and dollar cost averaging. Strategy number one, playing dead. It's exactly as it sounds. There's an old saying that the best thing to do during a, a bear market is to play dead. Same as if you met a bear in the woods, you know, play dead. I don't know if that advice is really relevant to a, like a real life bear, but that, that's what the that's what the saying is anyway. Basically the strategy goes that, you know, during a bear market, you, you play dead, you do literally nothing. You hold on to your assets, you don't sell, you don't buy, you just, you do nothing. You just sit and you just watch and you wait it out. And then when you think the bottom has hit or it's starting to turn up and it's, okay, 
okay, we're heading into a bull market now. That's when you start moving in, you start buying, selling, whatever you'd normally do, you get back into it. Now, one thing to just add to this, people that typically do the play dead strategy, usually invest in other things during this time. So they don't completely play dead with all their investments. Uh, they usually invest in other sort of things besides stocks. But um, as I'm not really going into that, I can't really talk into that huge amount. So if you did want to do the one, make sure you do some solid research, right? And the second strategy is called dollar cost averaging. So dollar cost averaging, it's pretty simple basically, no matter what the market's doing, where it's going up or down or blah, 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 bear market and bull market, you're just buying up. You're just collecting assets. You just buy, buy, buy. This is typically for people who intend to be in the market for, for a long time, maybe 10 plus years. And the idea is that over the long term, your, your cost of the stocks will average down, leaving you with a better overall entry price into the market. Now, before we get into what I'm personally going to be doing, I just want to say, if you're enjoying this video, please consider liking it so I can go out to some other people when, you know, help sort of get the algorithm on my side. And if you are enjoying this sort of content, please consider subscribing as well. I like to talk about stocks, investing, some money making videos, all that sort of stuff. Just money talks in general, really. So if that seems like your type of thing, please hit subscribe and uh, that'd be awesome. Thanks guys. So what exactly am I doing? Well, I'm 28 years old, right? I'm still pretty young. I've got many, many, many earning years ahead. I mean, that's a, that's a, so the advantage of that is I've got many years ahead of me, many earning years ahead of me. I'm going to be going with a dollar cost averaging strategy. So for me, the way it looks is I take a percentage of my take home pay and I put that into my brokerage account. In addition to this, I've got a handful of random online sort of side hustle things that I do to make a little bit of extra money. And then 100% of the profit for them also goes into the brokerage account. I do have videos on those side hustles. I do, by the way, feel free to check them out after you've seen this video. So once the money's in my brokerage account, I then buy other stocks, no matter the cost, no matter what the market's doing. I mean, obviously within reason, if there was a completely unexplained you know doubling of cost or, or something I would certainly research a little bit more but if it's relatively on par with how it's been trending lately I'll just buy it for the day I mean sometimes I do like to play a little bit of a game and see if I can beat the market for the day uh, it makes no difference in the grand scheme it's just me playing around but basically dollar cost averaging I just buy up because I'm investing for the long term and this is what I plan to do. As for what I actually invest in, you know, specifically, remember I'm investing for the long term. So I invest safely. Now there's only so safely you can invest and obviously all investments sort of have risk. They, they all do. You can't have a risk-free investment. But historically, what I invest in has typically been trending upwards over the long term. It's mostly a few ETFs and a couple of large Australian businesses that I don't see going anywhere for the next 50 years. They might not be on top for the next 50 years, but they're certainly going to be around. The goal for my investment plan is that in 20 to 30 years, I mean, hopefully 20, I'll have enough of a portfolio that I can live off of the dividends and essentially retire early and retire comfortably as well. You know, not just survive. Now, personally, I'll never stop working it all together because I reckon I'll get really, really bored, but it would be nice to not have to work. A quick little hot tip for you. I do also contribute a little bit extra into my super. If you haven't looked at your super, no matter your age, I definitely recommend speaking to a professional about that. I'm not even going to really touch on that. Just speak to a professional about that. Check your super if you're Australian. Obviously, if you're not Australian, you won't have a super. So as well. I haven't specifically deep dived into what exactly my portfolio looks like just there because I didn't want to divert too much from the actual title and topic of this video of investing, you know, in a bull market, in a bear market. But if that was something you wanted to see my portfolio specifically, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to do a video on that one as well. It's not a secret. I mean, lots of people have very similar portfolios. So is now a good time to invest? Well, for me, it is. History has shown us that bear markets are followed by much longer bull markets on average. And being that I'm young, I've only really started building my portfolio, have many earning years ahead of me. For me personally, it absolutely is a good time to invest. And if you're unsure about anything that I've talked about in this video and you feel you need some more knowledge, then I highly recommend reading up on this. Plenty of good books out there. In fact, they have actually done a video recommending some books that I reckon gave some absolutely solid advice and I'm following them almost to the letter. They talk about budgeting, investing, money in general, and they've really value added for me. So. Once you've watched all the other 50 things I've told you, to head to my channel and, and watch that one as well. I think it was the most recent one anyway. I mean, it, it is advice specifically for Australians, but with all of these sort of finance things, they're, they're relevant to pretty well everyone, really. Feel free to suss it out, read a bunch of books and learn as much as you can. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope it's helped and added some value for you. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.